Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. We've seen very high interest in local models, so that's the ability to run LLMs locally, for example, on your laptop or maybe on your device. Um, and we've done quite a bit of work on this. We have a few videos focusing on ways you can incorporate local models and advanced workflows like RAG. But there's been one thing that's kind of been missing, and that is this idea of tool use or function calling, which can be kind of used interchangeably. And I'm going to talk about that today because we just released uh, an integration with Llama CDP that enables this. So first of all, local LLMs, the big idea here is simply this. You can take an LLM's weights and you can basically quantize them or reduce their precision, for example, from like say 32-bit floating point down to say 8-bit or lower to reduce the model size and speed up inference with minimal loss in accuracy. This allows you to run it even on your device. So many, many Apple devices now will support running, uh, running LLMs uh, directly, locally, free, private. So this is like obviously really cool. Olama is one of the great options for doing this. Llama CPP is the other one. So kind of these are two of the more popular ways to do it. And there, there are, of course, some others. So I don't want to exclude anyone. Now, here's the rub. Tool calling is really important for lots of things, in particular agents. And really what's going on with tool calling is this. You're defining some tool, so external to the LLM. So let's say in this particular case, we have this tool called Magic Funky. Take an input, add two to it. What we really want to do is bind it to the LLM. OK, so we bind this tool. And when the input is relevant to that particular tool, the LLM knows to return a payload necessary to run the tool. Now, this is kind of an often a misconception. The LLM doesn't have the ability to like somehow magically run this function, right? It's string to string typed. But what's happening is it can return the payload necessary to run the function based upon the input and the schema that is extracted from the raw function itself. That's really what's going on. So what you're getting out from a tool call is basically like the tool arguments and the tool name for the input. So that's really what's going on. It's a really kind of central capability and kind of a high general interest. Now I wanna walk you through the process of doing this locally on my laptop uh, using our new Chat Llama CPP integration. So I'm gonna go over to the notebook here. Now here's what's very important. You have to pick the right model that ideally supports tool calling. So for this, I hunted around local Llama and this Hermes 2 model, Hermes 2 Pro Llama 3 8B has been fine-tuned for tool calling. So you can, I'll share, of course, this link. You can go through it, uh, but it's pretty neat. So in particular, scoring 90% on our function calling evaluation built in partnership with Fireworks AI um, and on our and 84% on structured output evaluation. So here's kind of the catch. This is a very good, this is a very good model to test. I'm gonna caveat that it's an eight billion parameter model most providers, I talked to Fireworks, for example, that kind of don't recommend tool calling with 8 billion parameter models, same with Grop. So 8 billion is definitely small, but it's what we can run locally on our laptop. Unless you have a larger laptop, you can try 70 billion, of course. But so we're going to try this out. Um, so we're going to be using this Hermes 2 Pro Llama 3 model that's been fine-tuned for tool calling, 8 billion parameter model. So all I've done is when I go over to Hugging Face here, I go to the files and versions. I just download one of these models. I already did this. So I don't want to waste your time with that. Um, I'm in my notebook now, I'm just in, pip installing a few a few packages here. Langchain Community, Llama CDP, Python. This is based on Python wrapper for Llama CDP. allows you to, to basically use Llama CDP functionality. So here's what I'm doing. I specify the path to my model. Boom, right here. And I go ahead and, and uh, init, uh, instantiate it. So boom, there we go. And so you'll see all this spam out. Don't worry too much about it. This kind of always is the case. It'll give you a whole bunch of logging about the model. You can kind of dig through it if you're interested. Um, so, and, and I will make a quick note. I'll share this, of course. Check out our guide to running LMs locally. There are some things you want to do with your environment before you try this, for example, on a Mac. Um, basically, so that you're utilizing Apple Metal or, or the Apple GPU, but that's kind of a separate point. Uh, and... Um, I'll, I'll point you to our guide to kind of go through that. Anyway, so we initialized our model. Uh, now let's try an invocation. So we go ahead and run this. And you can see it's running locally, so it takes a little bit of time. Uh, and I can even go to Langsmith because I should be just kind of logging these um, to my default project. Let's see. I'm in my personal user. I go to RLM. And there it is. So you can see Llama CPP is running. Uh, and it is still going. Okay, it looks like it's done. So it translated. Uh, uh, I love programming from English to French and this should be, yeah, there it is. It comes through. So, okay, cool. So we have basic functionality working. Um, let's see, we can try basic chain to prompt LLM. Uh, we can go back to Langsmith. We can kind of look at what's going on. So we can look at what the input is, input language, output language, German, input, I love programming, 
uh, this is still running and cool, that's done. And this should show up in Langstuff now, there it is. Okay, so those are fundamentals. Now here's where things get kind of interesting, tool calling, like what we talked about here. So what we're doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and define some tool. Uh, so for example, in this particular case, I'm defining the, the input to the input schema to the tool explicitly, this weather input location uh, and uh, the location and the unit specifies those as strings. Um, I add those to the argument schema for my tool. So this tool decorator indicates that this function is going to be a tool. And then I'm going to bind that to my LLM. So all I need to do is LLM, which we defined up here, right? That's this guy all the way up. That's our LLM, right? That's just our model. LLM dot bind tools. I pass the tool uh, function name. And this is the catch here. This is actually very important. To get this to run reliably, so at least in my experience, and I've tested this only only a bit, you I found that using enforced invocation of the function certainly improves reliability and performance quite a bit. We need to do evals on this to kind of confirm it, but that's been my experience to date. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna run this, and again, this might take a little bit of time because we're all running locally. Um, it'll kind of spam out, okay, and that's at RAM, that's pretty cool. So here's what's neat, if I go to the AI message tool calls, and look at this, this is pretty nice. Remember, look back at here, what is really coming with the tool call? All you're getting is like the payload need to run the tool and the tool name. Look at this, tool name, get weather, arguments, location, unit. And it's parsing that just from natural language, it even does the conversion from HCMC to Ho Chi Minh City. Pretty cool, right? Um, so this is actually working, this is working locally on my laptop, uh, I can go over to, uh, yeah, I can go over to here and yeah, look at this, this is neat, right? So I'm in Langsmith here. Uh, this is showing you that this particular tool is bound to my LLM. Um, it's cool. This flag tells you it's called, really cool. You get, here's the tool name that was invoked, here's the payload. So great, this, this is now working, that's really nice. Um, yeah, this is showing another example of my little magic function. Um, same idea, what is magic function of three? And let's see, yeah, so you get the tool name, magic function, and then the arguments, magic function three, so that's really neat. Now, what's another cool thing about this? Tool calling is kind of a very general case, and it can be used to do kind of structured outputs as well. Uh, and so we actually have a very nice kind of helper uh, kind of method for that called with structured output. Again, you just pass your, uh, your, your output schema uh, to, okay, in this particular case, you actually convert it to a dictionary, so you convert to OpenAI tool, and then you pass that in to a structured output. Let's try this joke. Tell me, let's try this out. Tell me a joke about birds. And that is running and hopefully this works and maybe it's a funny joke. Okay, this time it's a little bit flaky. It doesn't give me a setup. It only gives me a punchline. Let's try that again. So you can see the reliability is still a little bit variable. You'd have to tune this a little bit. Maybe it's an issue of, uh, yeah, okay. So in this case, it didn't quite work quite as well, uh, but I have seen this work in other particular cases. So uh, it may depend a little bit on the formulation of the joke. Okay, so in this particular case, you get the setup, you get the punchline. So again, uh, I think it's absolutely worth playing with this. It's really interesting. The fact that you can run tool calling locally opens up a lot of cool things. Um, of course, if you have a larger laptop, you can actually run higher capacity models like 70B. I think this would really work well. I'm using an 8 billion parameter model, a little bit small for this particular kind of use case, but it does appear to be working. New integration, I would definitely encourage playing with this. And I mean, here's the thing that I really think is important to note. Look, these models are only going to get better. So as better, L, you know, as better local LMs come out, better fine tunes, fine tune on more data, like the capacities will get more and more and more, or, or kind of greater and greater and greater. And so um, maybe in some future videos, we'll talk a little bit about setting up local agents using tool calling. We've done a lot of local agents using LangGraph without tool calling, but with the ability to kind of call tools through Lama CDP currently, um, we may be able to kind of take a stab at setting up some tool calling agents and uh, we'll follow up on that in the, in the future. Thanks.